Okay, hello, welcome. You've joined Pacona. Um, to introduce myself, I'm Akira. I'm the uh, product owner uh, at uh, for MongoDB products in Pacona. And Kimberly Wilkins, I'm the MongoDB technical lead for Pacona. So okay. Akira and I work closely together. Okay, and uh, we're we're here today to talk about uh, what we see in the code for version 5.5.0 uh, of MongoDB. I'll, hardly any of it's been discussed so far and it's just been driving me mad because there's lots of really good and interesting stuff in here so we thought we would uh you know review what's in the course is only at release canon at the moment um and uh all the features haven't been announced but we can see what's there so and i just couldn't resist it i i felt the need to talk about it and that's what we're going to do Okay, I'm going to do something now. I'm going to start sharing my screen and show a spreadsheet. Not very exciting, but this is this is my way of tracking what's happening uh, in MongoDB's code base through their Jira, uh, also through GitHub. Uh, as time goes on, less and less is being visible there. But you know, uh, for the last three or so years, I've been ha been able to happily track what's changing, and I like to share that knowledge with you. Okay, time to share screen. Here we go. Okay. Here's, here's, my, uh, here's my little workspace where I've been tracking the epics or the, uh, the Jira tickets grouped by project. Uh, and uh, I've been doing this, you know, each major version and, and, and sharing this uh, knowledge around with our partners and so forth. Uh, of course, also internally with Pacona. And this is something I thought I would share it with the public. So uh, there are various projects. Uh, and uh, I'll first, first of all, I'd like to give just a uh, uh, a short list of, of the the new features that are the most interesting to me. Uh, let's see. Well, first of all, uh, and you can tell this is an important one by the fact that it's got the oldest ticket number going way back. There's going to be the ability to do resharding. Um, okay, well, I'll hand it over to you, Kimberly. Could you explain <laughs> for the public what resharding is going to mean for the user? Well, resharding means one of the most difficult things all along for MongoDB customers is picking the correct shard key. And too many times they don't think about all the different things that go into selecting the shard key so that it'll work most efficiently. Then they get further down the road and all of a sudden they're, they have grown in size, they're big enough, their data size is big enough, and their performance tanks because of the bad shard key. And previously you couldn't do anything about it. You had to completely uh, drop the collection, redo the collection, reshard the collection, and start from scratch. Now, when you have you know, 100 gig, 200 gig, that's not such a big thing. But once you hit, you know, 800 gig, 900 gig terabytes, et cetera, for, for collection sizes, which we're seeing more and more of, that's really, in 24-7, you really, really can't do that. In 4.4, Mongo added the refinable shark key where you could add suffixes and make your shark keys more competitive so that you would not negatively impact performance. But the re actual full-on resharding is something that that customers have been asking for and MongoDB users have been asking for for a long time. So this is one that we're really excited about and to see how it's actually going to work, right, without negatively impacting the faults. So that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, def definitely being asked, being asked, they've been asking for this for a long time. It's It's been a ticket from way back when I, I don't, I don't know when, but maybe from the, as soon, probably more or less as soon as sharding was added, people said, oh, probably, probably were asking. So let's think, you know, 2015 or so, it's, it would, it would be that old, uh, 2014, maybe it's, it's quite an old one, definitely, but it's difficult to do that. Um, and I can, I can understand why uh, that was delayed. But okay, uh, that's that's one that's one of the, the features. Other another feature I've uh, noticed and be interested in is that is that collections will now be at they be able to add one time series field into them, and this this will probably lead on to having efficient time series um, commands, probably accuration pipeline commands. I actually haven't 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 followed this all the way through, but there will be a time series type of collection. Um, uh, so that's that's to me the second the second biggest feature. Uh, let's see as well. There will be uh, a versioned MongoDB API. This will only start at 5.0, but the point of this feature is that you'll be able to use an old driver continually um, and update your MongoDB server going ahead without being worried about getting a different behavior 
from the server as it as it moves into new versions. It will have a you'll be able to pin which uh, uh, version uh, behavior you expect, and presumably um, it, this will be the future. It'll be version six, seven, eight where this uh, matters. Uh, the future versions of MongoDB should serve the driver the same result, even if they're changing other things. So that again is, is another big feature. Uh, yeah, and it's too bad that, that they didn't have that you know, before, because you know, again, this is going to happen like Kira said in version five, but so many people are running into driver problems because they're still running and trying to upgrade from the recently EOL 3.6 with even older drivers and they're being held back because of the drivers. So this is most likely going to be an attempt to mitigate that problem going forward. So yeah, um, yeah, the uh, it's uh, I've I've always felt that MongoDB has uh, done a great job of of maintaining a wide window of compatibility uh, compatibility by what the drivers will accept. Um, three major versions or even four major versions mm -hmm. are often supported simultaneously by any single version of the MongoDB driver, which is actually pretty pretty good. That's I'm, I'm struggling to think of any product that's so dynamic, um, that's been so well supported by its driver. I, I really, I have always been impressed with that. That is actually excellent work on, the, on behalf of the driver team, but still, yeah, um, it, it will make it easier for them. Actually, maybe it would reduce the amount of uh, uh, tension between old and new requirements for the driver development in the future. Um, anyhow, that's, that's only, but let's move on to uh, another, another, another topic. I think MongoDB, I, yes, MongoDB have already announced this, but there's going to be an at cluster time option you can add when doing snapshot reads. Um, you could, you were able to choose a snapshot isolation type of read uh, in MongoDB already, but now you'll be able to specify the exact point in time by MongoDB's internal timestamp uh, and at a cluster level uh, that, that you'll do the snapshot read. So you'll be able to just choose a, a point in time probably pinned exactly to whatever cluster time of a, of a previous request you made. And you'll be able to say, show me the data as it was at that time. And you'll be able to do this outside a transaction. So, the, so the, the database server will have to pin at a storage engine level, some old data, and it won't be able to start cleaning that up for a while. But otherwise, the uh, transaction overhead won't, won't be born. Um, and, but you'll be able to do perfect uh, at, as as of a single cluster time reads across all your shards um, and not and not and not be worried about updates uh, changing things uh, your view of the old data this is uh, you know uh, pretty nice mongodb has always had this snapshot isolation but the ability, ability to choose your own cluster time arbitrarily now that that's something that's uh, quite an, quite an advance um, that's that is a feature for application users. Uh, uh, the next feature I'm thinking of is a good one for DBAs. Uh, and that is that uh, index builds will become resumable. Uh, and by resumable, um, I, I believe this, it will also apply to when a primary uh, an election happens and primary role changes from one node to another. I believe the index will con continue on the new primary, but even beyond that, You'll be able to build an index, say of a big collection, and even shut down the MongoD node and restart, and it will continue. Uh, so that's so that's you know re a real benefit for DBAs who just want to move on and not worry about losing their index build in the middle and in, in the middle of it all. And as you mentioned, the sizes per node, thanks to hard drive size increases, are just getting bigger and bigger, more than more uh, faster than RAM is, is is getting larger. RAM is not we know that RAM suddenly became, you know, reached terabyte sizes a decade or so ago, but it's not, it's not RAM is not increasing to, it's not continuing to increase, uh, even if, you know, a one or two terabyte um, um, uh, supporting motherboard is becoming cheaper. Uh, RAM is not increasing, but the sizes of disks are, def are definitely increasing. They're going up and up in the data sets we're seeing. So, Full collection operations, uh, whether they're backups or index builds, um, are taking a longer and longer. Uh, so anything that lets you survive, getting through that is obviously appreciated. Yeah. Um, and what, one other point, this is not just for, for the DBAs either, you know, because a lot of times it's an operation teams that oversees the building of these large 
indexes across you know multiple mega mega shards and just incredibly large collections. So it's going to be something that helps anyone who has to really support you know MongoDB across the board, right? Even even things that are automated. If something happens, you, know, you, you automate an index build process. Something happens during that where you have an election. Well, this is exactly what that's meant to be able to do. So it can just pick right back up. Yeah. Um, if 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 you're poking around into the code, actually, we're we're currently still in talking heads mode. So I I will try and uh, uh, bring bring our um, uh, bring our. Let's go to. Oops, I will try and bring our meeting. Oops, I'm I'm afraid I, I'm not able to bring our camera back in. Please ignore. Um, I have a little uh, window issue here. Um, I wanted to sh uh, show you here in this sheet that. Uh, one, one of the things that one of the code things you could look at to if you want to see um, what this is, of course, there are pieces of code marked resumable index build. There's also resumable range deleter, uh, <laughs> range deletions. This will hopefully fix the orphan documents, um, maybe not in the short term, but in the long term. Uh, a, a node being shut down won't leave you with orphan documents that just haven't been deleted by the, uh, the post balancer uh, chunk move range deletions, even the range deletions will come back and continue later on. Uh, anyhow, the underlying, one of the underlying pieces of code, uh, if you look for it, is the primary only service. Um, th this is a utility class that um, gives a way to, uh, for a task to be passed from one primary to a new primary after the, after an election happens. So this is, this is, this is purely code level, but this is, one of the things that they had to add, one of the important things they had to add to MongoDB to make these new features uh, possible. Okay, uh, what else did I want to mention? Oh, simultaneous indexing on all nodes. There'll be no more building background indexes and secondaries and uh, maybe doing an election as a way of reducing the, uh, uh, the index impact cost. With the, what I was calling the middle ground index builds, um, just my own name, uh, that we're in uh, four four, um, actually, my thing we're in four two. Uh, the impact of index builds has been reduced already, um, so I, I wouldn't be too worried about losing the ability to do a, a background index build on secondaries. Um, in any anyhow, w whether it is a good or bad thing, you you'll lose the opportunity. Now indexes will um, proceed in parallel um, on the primary and secondaries together, and they'll finish and commit together. So the index is built and all, or it isn't, um, and issues like when an election happens won't won't affect that anymore. Uh, something else, and anything else I wanted to mention about that? No, I um, uh, that was that was that. Uh, moving on, something else. Some other things that um, people might enjoy is that uh, date time durations will become supported. You'll be able in you'll be able to specify add a month or add a year or a quarter to your date. To your data expressions, uh, particularly in the accreditation pipeline. Um, this is probably something put off for a while because it's difficult. Up until from, from, a, from a nanosecond all the way through to a week, it's math, it's simple mathematics, it's simple ma multiplication, you know, seconds times whatever to get up to a week. That's fine. But from a month onwards, you have to look up to a calendar to, um, to find out when it when the what the exact increase in seconds should be between one time value and another. So that took a while, but it's finally coming. You will be able to, as you've been able to do in Excel, uh, even Excel for a very, very, very long time, two decades, three decades, you'll be finally be able to say, add one month uh, to um, date time expressions. Uh, spotting other things, um, the default block, the, the default compression library used in in uh, Wired Tiger will change from Snappy to Z standard. Um, this is okay, you'll be able to update. And if you were using Snappy before, it will accept that. It will see that Snappy was the compression um, algorithm used uh, in the tables. But by default, if you're making uh, new collections or an, a whole new node, uh, the compression is going to change to uh, Z standard. Um, I'm not sure that's the correct way to pr pronounce it. If you're looking for the library, look for S ZSTD. Um, but there, that that will be a change, um, and something else I really like is that uh, we'll be able to see resource consumption. We're talking memory, RAM, disk um, per operation. Uh, like at a current, if you're running the 
DB current op op operation, you'll be able to um, break it down. So that's something for very advanced users who are doing very, very, very fine tooth performance profiling. That's that's a, that's a pretty cool cool thing. Um, in the uh, and in the legacy cleanup stakes, there's two things I want you. To, the oldest uh, legacy wire protocols will be going away. They're well, they're not totally unsupported, but they're deprecated officially as of 5.0. The original op query op update, uh, where you had a different wire packet format for each of the CRUD operations, that one's going away. From here on in, it'll be the the op message op underscore msg um, wire protocol wire packet packet type for all the messages that's that's a good cleanup and the last thing is um some some types of software locks and mongodb really avoids software locks a lot it as you use it you your all those credit operations it, it's a it's a perfectly concurrent system there were however some locks on the admin db um uh i'm trying to think of where else but even those last ones uh, have been cleaned up so there'll be lock free reads no matter what uh, everywhere. Well, that's that's the that's the claim of the uh, tickets. Okay, uh, so that that's that's like my you know top ten, uh, not that it's exact, exactly ten features. Um, uh, any any questions or any extra features you wanted to to discuss before we go on to a demonstration, uh, Kimberly? No, those are the, the primary ones, right? The, you know, the ones that we're expecting, and you, you mentioned a little bit about time series collection. So a lot of this, like you said, we'll just see when it comes out, what's actually going to be available. So a lot of exciting things. Okay. Well, with that, let's, let's get into some uh, demos. We're going to, I'm going to focus really on one thing only, and that's the, um, that's going to be the reshard collection command. Uh, so let me open my terminal. Where do we have it? Okay. That's my uh, server. Oh, that's an that's an old uh, cap. okay. And here's an here's an extra terminal just in case I need it. Okie dokes. Um, so I've in this in this demonstration I've just set up a, really a bare a bare minimum um, cluster. It's just got two shards and actually both of those shards just have one node at the moment. It's it's really quite small. It's very it's not as uh, this is not a real demonstration of a, of a cluster that you you really, really need a reshard um, command, uh, a reshard collection command for, but still we will be able to uh, uh, look at it. Let me just get my commands uh, ready. Okay, I am going to con connect, uh, first of all, uh, just uh, via my Mongus uh, node. Okay, great. Let's see, I've connected and uh, I'm currently in the, Test DB. I've uh, have a I've created a couple of collections. One of those is this shard foo collection. How many documents did I put in that one? Let me see. Uh, just a million or so. Just a million. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty small collection. This will be a re relatively quick one to uh, move through. Um, uh, but th this is the one we'll use. The this collection has. A second, I should, okay. Right has fields of this variety. I've just made up some dummy data. Um, currently, uh, it's uh, sharded with a shard key by this JDA field. Uh, we'll change that to either this NS field or the currency field. Um, and uh, and we'll do that live. Um, so let's start, let's see. I will just double check which field I was using in the shard key by showing you SS status. Okay, here we have it. The test shard foo collection. Um, it's, it's got, this one's got a very small number of chunks, but on account of its its relatively small size. But as as you can see at the moment, uh, it is has a shard key on this JDA. Let's say let's imagine that this field ended up being rather clustered um, on some values. Um, there was there's two the chunks are oversized uh, and they can't be migrated as as they can't be migrated from one shard to another then we, we might start having shard imbalance issues. So this was, let's just imagine this was really the wrong shard key to pick. Uh, in 4.4, we could refine it and add extra fields if that helped, but often that wouldn't. Um, so I was kind of disappointed that, that they made such a big thing um, of the refinable shard keys. It seemed to be the only big feature for the server um, that was mentioned for 4.4 in the keynotes of MongoDB Live last year. Um, what we really needed 
uh, is the is the reshard collection uh, reshard collection command, and this and this is where we are. Okay, I will uh, just begin uh, running the command. Let's see, db run command. Great. So as I say, the command is just called uh, reshard collection. Uh, you would specify the full collection name, including its database. And I think you lost sound. Okay, is my sound back by now? Back now, Ch money yeah, chance? Back. Okay. Back. Okay, uh, how many seconds should I rewind in my explanation? Just where you said reshard collection. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, yeah. Well, I could, the command is, well, there, the command name is uh, reshard collection. Uh, I might have to run this in the admin DB. I'll, we'll check the error message in a second if that's the case. Uh, so you specify the full, the full namespace, the, the DB dot collection name. And the one other necessary field, of course, uh, is key, the new key. Now, the old key was uh, this. Um, if I was to run that again, if I was to run that, it wouldn't succeed. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is change this to, um, I think I'll pick that NS, NSN field. Let me, let me have a little peek up there. Uh, was it NSN? Yeah, I think I'll use this one. I, I made a random, um, a random, um, value and I'll and I'll use that instead okay so th this is it um, I will let's say control a I'll just uh, comment that out and bring it up into the middle of the page to make to make it easier to see um, there we go this this is it it seems so simple uh, but so much had to change so much had to be added to the code uh, to make this possible um, Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll change over and I just want uh, to give you a demonstration of how much work has gone into this. Uh, let's see. Okay, here, here I have uh, the source of, Mongo, of MongoDB. Currently, I'm in, uh, let's see, I believe I'm already in the right branch. Yep, I'm already, um, I'm already in 5.0. I, I won't bother doing an update. It's, it's only a few days behind. Uh, let's see. I... Well, in in Mongo, in Mongo, there are currently currently. Let me see how many. Uh, 100, 100, 120 or one hundred. I think now with uh, Mongo DB. Uh, wait a second. With Mongo, whoop, ew, that's that's a bit of a um, terminal error. Um, uh, there's how many commands? Let's have a look. There's 131 commands that are in MongoDB. Most of them users will not not use. There's, there's become more and more internal commands. But out of 130 or so commands, if I was to change into let's see, uh, MongoDB uh, CD source CD MongoDB MongoDB DB commands. Uh, how many files do I have? Okay, there's this many files, but this, this is not this is not all. But there's also the sharding level commands. So if I pop up to S uh, commands and run the same command. So between those sets of files, I mean, this, this is just a, a, a very rough way of looking at it, but that's sort of how, mu how much code we need uh, for the commands. A lot of these connect into other things at lower levels, particularly aggregation pipeline, other, uh, other query engine things. But for the top level of commands, this is how much code you need for 130, 130 or so commands. Let's look at, uh, uh, let's see, what was it, it was DB, um, is it resharding? Uh, let me check my location. Uh, yep, uh, sorry, S resharding. If I look into this subdirectory here, the resharding code uh, and check that. Whoops, uh, LS, am I uh, not? Uh, where are we now, Ellis? Whoops, I seem to have um, uh, come into the wrong spot. Sorry, um, I won't be able to show that to you. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I've, I've mis misplaced my path, and I'm not going to keep you waiting while I do a find through all my directory. Mm -hmm. I will pop back up to my Mongo shell and continue. But I, uh, as I recall it, there were about fifty. 
no, I cut it down to just, just the CPP main class files, about 40 files. So it took 40 different classes and utility classes and other classes just to implement what, what I, whoops, uh, just to implement this, they had to add a lot of code um, and it was, it was quite impressive. Yeah, and another thing to note real quick is that yeah. they had to add a lot of code and they're still working to refine a lot of code. If you'll look in, you know, in the GitHub, you do see that changes have been made as recently as today and yep. you know, the last couple of days, but for months before that, like, like Kira mentioned. So. Yep. Okay, looks. Um, radio. So, anyhow, yeah, let's, let's, let's go on and uh, have, have a run of it. Oh, I, I should have mentioned that uh, this, although this is the minimum you can put in, there is another another part that is uh, certainly uh, important, um, which we which I'm sure you would use for real if if you needed it, and that was the ability to specify um, which zones should be used for the resharding, where the new internal or temporary uh, collections should be made, uh, so um, so you can avoid putting load. Uh, on your same service. The reason you'll be running reshard is because already your performance is, is bad and there's nothing you can do about it. The idea of doing double work on the same shards to try and get out of your problem puts you deeper and deeper into a performance hole. So in reality, if you were in a, if you had a very, very large shard collection and it was sharded the wrong way and you had to get out of that, you would be adding new shards um, with fresh servers, making sure that those aren't being selected for balancing for things generally. Keep them in their own. Keep them in a zone that other ones won't use, and then recharge your collection into the the new shards for the new for for this special zone. That way, the data will be copied out, and the writes will be done on the new one without in, without putting write impact on your original ones. So, for a real for a real case, you will be using uh, zones for, uh, for for certain. I feel, but I don't. I didn't set up extra servers to do that, so I won't demonstrate it. I will just begin with the demonstration. So here we go. Uh, I, I should get ready to have a look at uh, what I can do. Now, this, is this an admin command one? Oh, it was an admin command. Uh, the old classic have to change to admin. Okay, let's go. Radio. Okay, there it is, it's running. I'm gonna put this shell in the background and pop into another one. Uh, I'm going to take a pop in and look at current op and see what's running. Okay, a lot is running. Uh, I'm going to have to scroll back up here. But as we begin, uh, it uh, begins running various, various commands. Uh, some of them are, um, I think it actually can be a lot longer as you go on and you'll see some much more complicated um, functions happening. Uh, but I'll keep, I'll keep on moving. Uh, while this is running, I would like to pop into the shard server running on the default to service and show you what's happening. If I look in in the test DB, we'll see that there's a system resharding and a long uh, UUID value um, while it's happening. So data is being copied from the shard foo to this new temporary collection. Uh, I will also change to the config DB. Now this is the config DB of the shard. You usually wouldn't see this. Users um, coming through a Mongos can't see this. It, this is an, an effectively an internal uh, DB, uh, system DB for on the shard. Let's have a look at the collections here. Okay, uh, this is, uh, have I managed to get here early enough? I have, excellent. So let's, let's note, this is the U UID. This is the collection that's being copied from. This UID is of shard ID. If you were to look into its, def, um, its uh, creation statement, you would see that it got this UUID. So as while the data has been copied from the original collection to its new form, where it's been, uh, it's being saved by a different shard key, so chunks will, and ordering will be in a different, different format. It, it's copying into a, uh, the, this temporary collection and at the same time, there's some, um, uh, there are some collections, system collections set up to track certain things where you can see a conflict stash, um, a, a one document collection that says, 
which the uh, what the donor shards are and what the recipient shards are. And this is this is probably the most important thing. Uh, there's an op-log buffer. Uh, while it's running, uh, not only is data being copied, but write operations that would affect uh, the original shard collection are being put into op-log op buffer, and it's being split up according to which shard, which new shard, those op-log writes will be affecting. So uh, if you were wondering how resharding can work, of course, you, you want to be copying everything. That goes without saying, um, splitting up according to that. But some people might be wondering what happens to writes? Um, how, how are they managing to do this? Is it, is it with op-log because op-log is it impotent? Yes, it is. Uh, but it has to be managed shard by shard from each donor, sh donor shard to the new recipient shard. The op-log is being well, um, split up kind of like by using a view on the original op-log collection. Uh, and that is uh, at the end of the process of doing the whole, the cloning from the original shard pattern to the new shard pattern, uh, the op-log will be applied at the end uh, and it will, um, uh, the, uh, the op-log will be applied at the end and it will, um, uh, that's, and that's how that will get the end. At the end, there's also, as with chunk migrations, which are of course much smaller, there will be a final critical section, which will be totally blocking, of course. Uh, and at that point, the new, uh, the new collection, which is currently renamed with this temporary name, will be renamed with the uh, original collection mm -hmm. name. And that will be, and after that, reads that come through the Mongos will start using the new one and they will start uh, directing by uh, the new shard key. So the, the pattern of distribution through the Mongos will change after that. Yeah. So uh, that's what I wanted to show. But at the moment, at, at this uh, RC1, uh, release candidate one, we found the code was not working. It, it backs off, it gets to the critical section and stops. So presumably as they go through the release candidates, they will eliminate that bug and uh, and finish this and we'll have a resharding collection in 5.0. It's not so, guaranteed it's not guaranteed that it will be because there are there are some there are the conflicts I saw or uh, do look kind of tricky. Um, maybe they'll release it in 5.1 or 5.2. So this is uh, because MongoDB has a new quarterly. This is, this is a mystery. We don't know what their policy is going to be, and they're not talking about it. But so much of the code is here already that I feel it's probably going to come out in 5.0. Uh, but yeah, we, this this is the year where we learn what Mongo, MongoDB is, is, and, is and is not going to do with good features that get developed in the intermediate quarters. Um, will they be backported to the 0 0.0 version, 5.0 or like next year and 6.0? Uh, or will they just keep it a development and wait until next year. We we don't know. Uh, that's that's undetermined. Yeah, okay, I'm that's, yeah. that's something that's yeah, it's super important because what you have to remember, you know, resharding and, and bad shard keys has been a huge issue for customers, especially if they've grown and you have these 24-7 and they're huge, huge collections, huge instances, huge clusters. So MonoDB is addressing this, right? Um, and it's kind of hard to think that they would fix it and then not at least backport it to 5.0. In some of the Jira tickets around sharding that I've seen that have just been resolved over the last couple of days, I've seen you know, fixed in, in version 5.0 RC3 or 5.0 RC6 or even 5.51. And then the backport, of course, requested to, to 5.0. So, so hopefully we are going to see this. Hopefully the community is going to see it. You know, community edition, and it won't be just reserved for the enterprise with the Atlas, because this is such a huge, huge, important uh, mm -hmm. change for for people, for customers, for MongoDB. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I I have an interesting announcement. I just noticed that this time the um, uh, the shard command uh, completed. I'm not sure what uh, issues I may have had last time I ran it. Um, I should certainly maybe shave my logs from last time we ran it and the, and the critical section didn't finish. Uh, but I like to point out that um, uh, this time uh, I did finish with that error and we we now have that small collection uh, resharded um, uh, by the new field NSN. Um, but as I 
just wanted to explain what I changed on my screen, but to go back to what just, uh, you know, uh, the point about when uh, code will be released. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, we, it, we're not sure what it's, what it's going to be. And that's pretty, pretty annoying. Um, you know, what, what if uh, a feature is, you know, 99% complete uh, and in Mongo, in, a, in an open source project, people will just go ahead and finish it or release it as an experimental feature. Um, and the people who need it most will put the effort in to make sure it works. But if when it's a proprietary company, maybe they decide to sit on it um, and keep it, keep it, keep it for a year. And I, I really hope that's not going to happen because um, it'd be such a shame, particularly for anybody <laughs> who wishes they could reshard in the coming year. Uh, this, this is, this is a really, really good feature. Um, totally cool. Uh, yeah, just, yep. just one, one more other thing. It's like, remember, overall, this is basically a cloning, right? You could change your chart key previously by doing some risky things, you know, that ending up doing dual rights, et cetera, and then, you know, hacking the config file, but that is super, super risky. And this is all the new stuff, all the new code that, that they've done, the changes on the code is essentially doing that. So the thing to remember mm -hmm. is you can possibly get around this by zoning, but you, you do need to remember that this will be involving additional write activities and additional movements of, of chunks, et cetera. So, it's still always better to put the work in to do the shard, to, to try to determine your best shard key and not rely on a resharding operation where when you've got just huge collections, it could be problematic and, and could negatively impact performance. So. Here we go. I'm running the create collection command. I'm using the the more, um, the longer server, server command type, but um, I'm, I'm guessing it will also be supported by the shell create collection command too. So all, all I'm doing here is adding an object called time series uh, and the name of the field that will be um, uh, that will be the time series field. There can be only only one in my understanding. I will use that same uh, field name that I was using before um, and I will also use the same collection name. Okay. Did it, I think it was an okay. I see an, I see an okay one. Yeah, this, this, this is okay. So now I will go back and insert the same, uh, oops, uh, insert, insert the same documents as I had before. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Just being complete, I can't resist. Okay, db foo. Oh, no, 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 db ts foo. Find. Okay, uh, the uh, uh, what? What did I want to mention about this? Um, db ts foo get indexes. Oh, that's that's actually. That's a bit strange. It's not. It's. Uh, I do. I do understand that there is a change with time series collection that it doesn't require uh, the same record ID field in the collections at the wired tiger level, and, and that that's a change that had to be supported. But I'm very surprised that it doesn't report uh, either the update time um, uh, field as an index or the underscore ID. I mean, okay. It, Kind of makes sense based upon what I told you a moment ago, but this this is this is surprising. What else can we see? Uh, okay, we have the collection I cre just created, TS Foo, and we've also suddenly got views has come into play, and we see a collection called System dot buckets dot TS Foo. So uh, Foo dot count it should be six. Uh, db dot okay i guess the bucket in question was is uh, wide enough um, I, I guess it, it zooms up to being as much as 16 megabytes um, the maximum decent size that the mongodb server will accept and it's put the values in one bucket. 
uh, if you've been using a time series DB, a natural time, se t um, time series DB, you'll might have an, you might appreciate why why this is so. It's sort of breaking down values into their per field groups, the cold groups as, as, as it's often called. So this view has been created um, and this is, uh, it seems to be the choice uh, MongoDB has taken and how they're going to uh, implement a time series type. It's not a very native type, but it's making it a lot more like that. But it's still, it's a view on a document DB um, with uh, changes uh, in how the data is stored in, in wired target tables to make it more efficient. I, I wouldn't go so far as saying it's it's a you know it's it's a very you know it's a natural native way of doing time series even though it's really following the architecture a lot. MongoDB is still a document database uh, but they're certainly in doing what they can to improve it. Uh, but as uh, is in charter clusters. I don't think that'll be permanent. My guess is in maybe version six next year that it will become possible to do it uh, in uh, in a in a shutter cluster. Um, uh, there we ha um, but if, but for the moment it will only be supported on uh, replica sets. Well, anyway, well, we'll stop there. That's probably been I've wanted to make it twenty minutes, um, aimed to make it thirty minutes. I'm guessing it's forty minutes, or maybe you're going to tell me, uh, Kimberly, it's already forty-five or fifty minutes. So probably we should stop. Um, uh, we, we didn't want to uh, uh, take up too much of, too much time of everybody's working day, but please, yeah, I hope you uh, enjoy enjoy this. And uh, if you uh, if you'd like to, um, yeah, take a take a peek around. I'll I might I might share a link to this Google spreadsheet if you want to look at the overall um, new features that are being added. Uh, I will come back to here and uh, pop back into. Um, Back into camera mode. Okay, so um, uh, any any uh, any uh, any other points we'd like to that we should discuss? Do you think, Kimberly? And time series collections is something you know that a lot of people look outside of MongoDB for, and so mm. obviously that's probably one of the reasons that it's it's needed within MongoDB uh, as an added feature. So that's just two of the things that are coming about. You know, we talked a little bit about some other things. Super excited to see this and to hopefully hear more next week and see what's going to be available. Because uh, I'm seeing, you know, 5.1 and some of the Jira tickets and, and multiple 5.0 release candidates. So, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Um, well, of course, there has to be multiple release candidates, but if they, if they get marked with 5.1, yep, yeah, that's it. They're, push, they're pushing off um, and there won't be in the GA that we see. I, we don't know when the GA is going to be July, August, um, but probably probably one of those two months. Um, but if, they, if they're tagging at five one, yeah. that's that says. And according to their policy, um, their new policy uh, with quarterly releases, that's not coming. Uh, what Pocono will do is a different matter, but probably probably following upstream because we keep on aiming to make a drop in drop in replacement uh, for MongoDB Enterprise. Uh, so uh, we'll probably probably be following the same thing. Just. Okay. To, just yeah, we can all talk through the, the back ports, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. excellent, excellent. Well, thanks, Akira, for driving the keyboard, right? Uh, oh, no, my pleasure, and uh, uh, thanks, thanks for joining in, and let's uh, let's look forward to next week's news, and yes. we'll cat, we'll uh, we'll certainly be doing doing some more uh, some more videos on that one. Okay, have a, have a good night, and uh, I'll have a good day. Right, I'm from you. Tokyo. Okay, so we have Akira here who is going to answer a couple of questions. So Akira, over to you. Hi, hi. Um, okay, I'm not sure where are the uh, where the questions are coming in. I I'd, fl I'd flipped over to uh, uh, LinkedIn and I'd seen some questions there. Are there any any besides the ones at LinkedIn that I should know about, Bronwyn? Uh, yes, I will I have a couple here for you. Okay. Um, so... well, while while you're uh, while uh, just opening that window, I I wanted to reply to Antonius. Uh, he asked, uh, "Will um, uh, Z standard be used uh, for indexes?" Yes, I think so. Um, uh, for that is a that's that's a block compression option of Wired Tiger in both indexes and collection 
collection files are just B tree files to uh, wide target. They've got some slightly different options, but they don't uh, disable compression indexes. So I think um, Z standard will be used for the indexes as well. Um, I, I can be disproven on that, but I think it will. Um, I did though notice accidentally that uh, it looks as though they're sticking with Snappy in the wide try the wide target transaction log, or the otherwise known as the journal files. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know a good reason why that would be the case. Um, uh, maybe they just forgot about it. At least in the release candidate version that I was uh, using uh, using on the day. Um, but yeah, it, both indexes and collection files will be using the new compression standard. Uh, well, at least if you're making the collections new. Uh, I, I there's another question there, um, but I think I an answered it in text. Okay, so I'll I'll let that be. Uh, sorry, Bronwyn, did you have a question? I do, there's one here. So there was a question that came in. Have you seen anything that will improve MongoDB's performance compared to the last version? Okay, uh, no, uh, that's it. Uh, I, well, if you're doing a time series calculation, the time series field uh, will be, will, will certainly um, uh, give you some, uh, some improvements. Uh, so that's one uh, type of query that'll go faster, but at a storage engine level, uh, I haven't seen anything that uh, will make things faster. And generally as MongoDB is, uh, you know, getting bigger, it's kind of getting fatter. Um, it's putting on weight. It is improving the stability of things, but that comes at a little cost. So things are gradually getting a little bit slower. Um, and for example, there is the, the uh, index is being built uh, in sync between primaries and secondary. That's one thing which will make the index builds a little slower. The fact that they can be resumable will make them a little bit slower. Generally things will be getting a little bit slower. The only exception I can think of is that um, there'll be a, t a way to do time series calculations, presumably using the aggregation pipeline that's coming up. Um, so, but apart from that, no, it's, it's not, it's not the, uh, it's not, uh, the, uh, the good old days of MongoDB where storage engine improvements were coming out, um, version after version. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not going to go faster. Um, it's just going to be more stable to work with mainly. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, one other question. So how many of these features are for Atlas only? Uh, well, none, none of these features are for Atlas only. I don't look at uh, the Atlas code because it's closed source and it's, it's, it's in their cloud, uh, cloud environment. And um, as far as I know, nobody outside MongoDB has access to that. Uh, I've only been looking at what is in the core MongoDB server, that original product, which was the, you know, it was the breakaway success of MongoDB, the company, or 10 gen, as it used to be known. Uh, and I just stick to that. So, uh, I don't want to mislead people and say, you know, uh, you've seen something here, maybe you won't get it unless you're using Atlas. Um, that's not the case. I, we're, I'm, I'm purely sticking to features that actually are in the MongoDB community version, which you may run yourself, or which we will inherit um, and merge into the kind of server for MongoDB. Purely that, uh, nothing to do with Atlas. Atlas, I'm sure, will be adding new features um, in, and I'm sure they'll announce what they are next week in MongoDB Live. Uh, but I'm not covering that. I'm just purely sticking to the DB server. Okay. Um, I see another question that has just come in from YouTube. So I'm a relatively new developer and use MongoDB as my go-to database. I've wondered why Lookup can't use sharded collection. It's a very cool feature. Is there technical limitation? Uh, sorry, I uh, wondered if uh, what can't use uh, sharded collections? It's um, lookup can't use sharded collection. Oh, um, uh, why the lookups can't use uh, sharded collections? Actually, I believe uh, that's that's a that's a kind of a random uh, a random question, not related to five point zero. Just just for everybody else's context, um, the uh, I I thought that lookup uh, was able to use um, uh, was able to use uh, uh, I thought it was able to use it. At least if you used a look a lookup click uh, a lookup condition that was by the same shard key, um, uh, otherwise it would be just branching out every shard because it would be an untargeted query. I I thought it was able to. Um, the reason why it, you, it would not be a good idea to design it that way um, is because you might get 
a you know an untargeted uh, query whereas your original um, request might be come to one shard when they do a lookup joining this table and another table if it if, if it, it doesn't also stay one to one with shards if it has to be distributed to every other shard you've got a, an ex exponentially increasing uh, cost with reads um, at least the network traffic for the reads so for performance reasons it may have been banned but having said that I thought if you were doing a lookup again by the same shard key uh, that it would be effective um, uh, but I, I, I can't quite remember this is not something I've been looking at recently I've been as I say focusing on the 5.0 uh, changes okay well actually just to add a bit more more context the question just did just say um, it is a new big question um, and that they just couldn't find the, the right answer anywhere. So that might be the case. Um, okay. But uh, Akira, I think that's that's about it from, from the question side. I'll just have one more look and see if there's anything else that comes in. Um, but if not, we will thank you very much for your time. We will post the recording shortly so anyone can, uh, can re-watch again on demand um, in the next couple of minutes. Okay. Actually, I have an addendum. When I, I wanted I wanted to say at the end of the end of the recording that uh, in the time series I talked about that that time series foo collection as being a view on uh, sorry the buckets as being a view on the TS foo. I, I meant that upside down. It's the buckets is the real collection, and um, what you think is the collection is actually the view. Um, if you look in system views, you can see it. Um, that was upside down, so I didn't want to make that correction. But um, that was one last comment I wanted in. I hope, hope, hope everyone enjoyed it and I hope it's educational. Uh, hit, hit me up uh, in LinkedIn um, uh, uh, or in Pocono forums uh, under particularly Pocono server for MongoDB channel. If you've got a question about uh, what you saw in 5.0 or something else you can see in 5.0 that we didn't cover. Actually, there's at least two or three or four times as much good content in there, um, which we couldn't cover for time reasons, uh, either through LinkedIn or through Pocono forums. Please just keep on adding questions about 5.0. There's still a couple of business days, or well, three, I think it's three business days left before we get to live. So there's a, there's a chance to get into the internals before we see um, some other, other presentations about it. So yeah, please, please um, shoot your questions in and I'll be happy to answer them. Awesome, Akira, thank you very much. And thank you everybody for tuning in and we will catch you all soon. <laughs>